Hey everyone, my name is Nate. Welcome to The Dollar Guide. This is one of our new YouTube channels. So in this video, we are discussing the different stock market order types. And we're gonna discuss each one of these in detail. There's quite a wide variety of them. So I do recommend taking out a piece of paper and a pen just so you can jot these down so that you can keep track of what we're talking about in this video. Now, there's really four primary types of stock market orders that we can have. Uh, and the main ones are gonna be a market order, then we have limit orders, then we have stop orders, and then we have variations of that like stop limit orders and stop loss orders and uh, trailing stop orders. We'll talk about all of those in this video. I know it can look a little bit confusing, but trust me, once you watch this video, you're gonna have a pretty good understanding of these different types of orders and when you might wanna be using these when you are investing in the stock market or even in different types of markets like cryptocurrency markets, these types of orders can be very valuable. So let's get started with the first one, which is market orders. Now a market order is one of the simplest orders that you can have. It's probably the one that's done more than 50% of the time. Uh, there's good and bad things about a market order. But essentially what you're doing here with a market order is you are either buying or selling at whatever the current price is at the moment. So if the stock price is $10 and you put in a market order, well, you're probably buying it at around $10, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. So a market order, it's basically the fastest way to fill an order, meaning that you say, you know what, regardless of the price, this is I'm, I'm buying it now, this is how many shares I'm buying. Uh, and that's what a market order is. It's great for getting into a stock or selling a stock very quickly. The downside to a market order, as you'll see when we start to talk about these different other types of orders like limits and, and, and stop orders, the downside to a market order is that you might not always get the specific price that you wanted to uh, because when you put in an order, there's going to be a very small amount of time. Sometimes this can be just a couple of nanoseconds and sometimes this can be multiple seconds or even up to a minute or more. Um, when you put in a market order, sometimes it takes a while to fill that order. And if the stock's moving very quickly up or very quickly down, you might end up paying a different price than what you were hoping to pay for that stock. Um, so an example of this is with a market order, I've seen people people really shoot themselves in the foot or get screwed if maybe overnight they place a market order for when the market opens and the stock price is way down or it's way up. Uh, and so they end up paying way more for the stock than what they intended to do. Um, so overall though, market orders, it's a fairly simple concept um, and it's, it's one that I use for the most part. Uh, it's probably best for people who are doing long-term investing. You're not too worried about the day-to-day -day, uh, different swings of a stock. So that's a market order. Hopefully you understand that. Now we're gonna talk about limit orders and stop orders. Now with limit orders and stop orders, there's going to be a buy side of it and a sell side of it. And we'll talk about each uh, how each one of those uh, varies, okay? So let's start with a limit buy order or a buy limit order. Hopefully you're writing these down so that you can keep track of this. Now a buy limit order, what this is going to be is uh, you are essentially setting a price uh, at, at which you would hope that you would buy the stock that's likely going to be lower than what the current price of the stock is at the moment. So for this example in this video, let's say that there's a $10 stock, but you don't really wanna buy it at $10. You wanna buy it slightly below $10, maybe at say $9 per share. And so you can set a limit buy order so that if that stock price, which is now at $10, if it falls down to your limit order price of $9, it will then initiate the trade and it will then automatically buy those shares at $9 rather than $10. Now, the downside to a limit buy order is that it might not necessarily get filled. So you might wanna buy this at a lower rate, uh, but sometimes say that the stock price is at $10, right? You set your limit buy at $9, but if the stock never drops down to $9, you might never actually purchase that stock and the order may never actually go through. So if that stock's at $10, you set your limit at $9 and the stock just keeps going up, you might never ever fill your order. And that's the problem with limit buys. So there's good and bad parts of it. Uh, but let's talk about limit sells. Limit sells are also a great thing as well. Uh, I use these quite a bit. Uh, let's say that you own this $10 stock. It's $10 a share. And you think that you wanna sell this stock at $11 per share. 
but you know, maybe you're not on your computer all the time. You're not wired in looking at the different stock prices all day. So if you wanna automatically sell your stock at a certain price that's higher than your current uh, stock at, at the moment, uh, then you can set a, a limit sell order that will automatically sell that stock when it gets to that specific price. So with the limit sell order, let's say that you own this $10 stock and you wanna set a limit sell order for $11 per share when the stock price goes up. So maybe your stock price stays stagnant for a long time, but the day that it hits up, to $11 per share, it will automatically trigger a sell and it will sell at around that price. Keep in mind though, that it's only triggered at that limit sell or limit buy threshold. It doesn't mean that you're selling it for that exact specific amount of money because there is still that nanosecond or a couple of seconds uh, where you're just trying to find a buyer or a seller for your stock because hopefully you understand this, the stock market, the way it works, there's buyers and sellers of stocks. So in order to buy stocks or shares of a company, somebody has to be selling those. So they're not just created out of thin air, somebody's buying and somebody's selling. So we always need to find buyers and sellers. Okay, so now let's talk about stop orders. We have buy stop and we have sell stop orders. What you're gonna find with stop orders is it's pretty much the reverse of what limit orders are, meaning that you're buying these on opposite sides of the prices that you would with limit orders. Hopefully, let me just explain this a little bit better. Okay, so with a buy stop order, you are setting the price, you're setting the stop price higher than what uh, the current price is at the moment. So the reason why people do this uh, is let's say that the stock price is $10 per share and you say that, you know what, I wanna see some momentum in this stock. Uh, I wanna buy it at $11 per share because I wanna see the stock price going up before I put money into it. So you can put a buy stop order in uh, or a stop buy order. And what this is going to do is, let's say you put this buy stop order at $11 per share when the current stock price is $10 per share. Uh, and so once there's momentum, then it can initiate that trade at that moment. I, I don't really use buy stop orders very often, but I know some people like to use those, especially day traders or swing traders. Uh, but for the most part, I, I don't use those very often. Now we have sell stop orders. This is one of my favorites and it's probably the one that I use most often uh, throughout my everyday life and as an investor it's something that I use uh, pretty often. So what's great about a sell stop order is it can help mitigate risk. So let's say that you own this $10 stock, right? We're using this as an example for all of these. Let's say that you own this $10 stock um, but maybe you're going on vacation and uh, you're worried about, you know, maybe the stock price is going to go down to zero. It's going to be like a big Enron scandal and the stock price might plummet uh, and you don't wanna to have to worry about this too much. So you can set a sell stop order at below that current price of the stock. So let's say that you own this $10 stock, you can set a sell stop order at $9, which means that if the $10 stock drops down to $9, it will automatically put in an order to sell your stock at that price. And what's good about this is it helps uh, sort of uh, alleviate some, some risk. It, it, it mitigates some risk uh, so that you don't end up losing all of your money. And I do this a lot because, you know, sometimes I'm on vacation, I'm in the wilderness somewhere for a week or two at a time, and I don't have an internet connection. But I don't want to have to worry about whether my stocks are down 80% this week uh, while I'm camping in the woods without Wi-Fi. So I put in sell stop orders to help uh, kind of get rid of some of this risk. So maybe I lost a little bit of money, but I didn't lose a ton of money if I didn't have those sell stop orders in. Now, let's get into the final two here. Might sound a little bit more confusing, so I really do hope you're writing this down. We have stop limit orders. And stop limit orders, it's gonna confuse people at first because you're setting actually two different prices when you go through the order uh, with your brokerage company. And so the way a stop limit order works and the reason why we use these is let's say that uh, the stock price is once again at $10 per share. Now you wanna set a stop limit, maybe at uh, $9 per share, right? A sell stop at $9 per share because just in case the stock tanks and you're worried about it. So you set the stop price at $9 per share, but then with a stop limit order, we're actually going to set a limit price as well. So we're gonna set a limit price at a little bit below that stop price sometimes. And that could be at maybe $8 per share. Now, why do we do this? What's the purpose of setting two different prices here? The reason why we do stop limits is primarily to prevent against uh, things that are known as flash crashes. Now, a flash crash could be something where, you know, we saw this in 1987, but we also see this with uh, various different individual companies as well, where the stock price might go down 30% in literally a minute or two minutes. Um, and so stop limit orders help prevent or protect yourself against things like that. So, 
Uh, the way that this works is, let's say we have this $10 stock, you set your stop your stop order at $9, but you set your limit order at $8 on the sell, right? So if this stock is dropping too quickly, it will trigger the uh, sell stop order at $9 per share, but if it's going down so fast and it dips below $8 per share, well, you have a limit on that, and so you're not going to sell below that price, and so this helps us uh, to make sure that we're not uh, just kind of liquidating our position too quickly. And 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 so that's the reason why we use stop limits. You can use them in the reverse as well, though I don't use those very often. Uh, now, finally, we have a trailing stop order. I love these as well. Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. The way the trailing stop order will work is as your stock price goes up, you'll have a, a trailing stop order following along behind it. You can set it at maybe you know $1 behind or $5 behind or a percentage behind the stock price. So as it goes up, your stop order continues to follow it. But if it ever drops down below a certain threshold that you set, then it will automatically trigger the sell. Um, and so that's kind of a more long-term approach there, uh, a trailing stop order. So those are the different types of stock market orders that we can have. There are different variations of these. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comment section, and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Uh, we just started it. I think we have 17 subscribers, so every new subscriber means the world to us. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Drop a like, and uh, I'll see everybody in next week's video.